All right, I got my umbrella up, which is a buffer, not for rain or sun, but noise. Seems to work a little better. The wind doesn't hit the microphone. We're in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 to 15, continued in the commentary. And these verses read, For he himself, Christ himself, is our peace, having made the both groups into one, Jews and Gentiles, and having abolished the dividing wall of the barrier of enmity between us. That wall is the, the law of Moses. Having abolished the enmity between both groups in his flesh, having annulled the law of the commands contained in ordinances. See, there's the Mosaic law. That the two groups he might create in himself into one new man making peace. That's the church. So when Christ came and died for the sins of the whole world, not just the Jews, and those that believe, Jews and Gentiles, they moved out, the Jews moved out of the situation with the Gentiles. They were at enmity with one another, the failure of the Jews to keep the law, be a representative of God on earth, showing the righteousness of God, and especially the righteousness of the law that they actually kept in a legalistic manner such that they were hateful towards the, the Gentiles. They were supposed to be kept separate but they were also supposed to be a righteous, godly example to the Gentiles and to one another, but they weren't. So when Christ came and died for the sins of the whole world, God made the two groups into one, so that they might be created into Christ Jesus, into his body, into one new man, characterized by eternal peace with God and one another, and able to make temporal peace, which is dependent upon the individual believer's response toward maintaining fellowship with God and other believers. Take a look at this. This is about fellowship. You can take a look at that and get some details on it. Not in view is some kind of Gentile inclusion into Judaism with Jewish traditions and the law of Moses intact as some contend, many, wherein all individuals are declared to be spiritual Israelites. The one new man is neither Jew nor Gentile. Galatians 3.28 Ethnically one thing, spiritually is another. The one new man was not created by renewing individual men, but by forming them all together into one new body, the church, of which Christ is the head of the body of Christ. Ephesians 2.16, Romans 7.4, and 12.5. Every individual of each group of believers, Jewish and Gentile, now has eternal peace together as one body as well as individuals. One individual in that body with one another and with God having been created through Christ in his flesh, through his sacrifices for sins on the cross, into his body, the church. That's a mouthful. The peace between Jewish and Gentile believers came when God forgave all believers of their sins. He canceled the written code, the entire law of Moses. Before God's written law, his written code, people stood condemned by that code because that's the righteousness of God. And if you kept it perfectly, then you would be in view and satisfying to God to enter the kingdom of God eternally. But no man, especially those, all men are sinners, could do that. So you had to resort to the grace of God through the sacrifice that was promised through Abraham's descendant, who was Jesus Christ. Or look back on it, he's already done that. All you have to do is believe and your sins, which are paid for, will now be forgiven. So it worked against the Jews and opposed them because there was none capable of perfect righteousness. And it worked against the Gentiles also who didn't have the law, but knew had, had a, a righteous uh, goal uh, on their own conscience. And they didn't keep that either. So this is the standard of the law of Moses. They didn't keep that. Man cannot be saved. It worked against them and condemned them. But in Christ, in his flesh, in his sacrifice for sins, so that all who believe in him will have eternal forgiveness unto eternal life, the purpose of the Mosaic Law was completely filled and done away with. Romans 10.4 corroborates this. For Christ is the end of the law of, for righteousness to everyone who believes. So that righteousness should come by a moment of faith alone in Christ alone. Philippians 3 9 and Romans 4 5 and in Romans 8 2 to 3 for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus 
has set you free from the law of sin and death, the law of Moses. For what the law could not do, weak as, as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So the Mosaic law was annulled, all of it, ceremonial and the, the legalistic part, so that in himself he, Christ Jesus, might make the two, Jew and Gentile, into one new man, thus having established peace one with the other, Jewish with Gentile believers and with God, the new man is the church. Ephesians 1, to 23 And God put all things in subjection under his feet, under Christ's feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who is filling all things in all ways. Note that this peace is a positional one and an internal one. It doesn't reflect from moment to moment what you may be like in this temporal life. Most of the time in the temporal life you say, I have no sin, you're a liar. The enmity and hostility is enabled by God to be over with in eternity and potentially in the temporal life preceding eternity. Now, the way to resolve your sin problem in this temporal life is confession of sins, 1 John 1 9. Not by repenting of all your sins, that's not possible to do perfectly. Now, it is up to the believing Jew and Gentile to make sure that each one is diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace in their temporal lives. These are great corroborative verses. Ephesians 4 1 3. Therefore, I. The prisoner of the Lord, employ you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called, and do this with all humility, humility, not humidity, humility and gentleness, all that noise, with patience showing tolerance for one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, and for temporal peace to be preserved amongst members of the body of Christ. They must maintain fellowship with God and with one another through God's gracious means of confession of known sins on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. You can start to repent from your sins, but you're not going to do it perfectly. And when you do have sins, what are you supposed to do? If we confess our sins, believers, God is righteous and just to forgive us these sins that we confess and purify us from all unrighteousness in our temporal lives, and that will restore fellowship with God and one another. Expressing agape love toward one another is then the follow through once confession is made. And as you don't, if you fail and don't succeed, confess again. It's a wonderful avenue to go. By grace, you are preserved in this temporal life to live out your years as you confess and move on in the Christian life. And Ephesians 2.16, we move to that verse. And now in Christ Jesus, you being once afar off, being nearby the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace, who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. This is one continuous sentence leading into 16. By abolishing in his flesh the enmity, which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so that in himself he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace. And then with 2.16, and that he might reconcile both in one body to God through the cross, having slain the enmity in himself. So Ephesians 2.15 continued the message of verse 14 of Christ Jesus having abolished, abolished the enmity between both groups of people. Jewish and Gentile believers. Trying to get rid of that little annoyance there. In his flesh, in the sacrifice of his physical body for the sins of all mankind, which resulted in a number of things, not the least of which was in his having annulled the law of the commands contained in ordinances, the law of Moses, in its entirety, rendering it powerless, having fulfilled, fulfilled its purpose, Romans 10.4. Whereupon Ephesians 
continues this long run-on sentence, stipulated another result of Christ's sacrifice for the sins of all mankind, that of having reconciled both groups into one body to God, Jewish and Gentile believers into one new man through the cross, having slayed the enmity between these two groups of believers in himself to God. So not only were Jews and Gentiles reconciled to each other, one at a time, as each individual believed, Ephesians 2.15, at the moment that each one expressed a moment of faith alone in Christ alone unto eternal life, but both of them together having been have been reconciled to God one at a time as they believed and as part of the one body of Christ. It's amazing what God has done through his grace for all these things. There are many, many things that we need to explore once we became believers. What happens? The privileges we have, the gifts. Although Christ's sacrifice for the sins of all mankind did indeed reconcile all mankind to God, potentially it did so with one proviso, that those who trusted alone in him, alone for eternal life, would be reconciled to God unto eternal life and their experience unto an eternal position of peace with God, in other words, eternal life with him. You have to believe, and then in your temporal life it become an actual thing. They would, in fact, receive the position of eternal reconciliation in their experience the moment that they believed in Christ Jesus for it. But that is precisely, precisely what so many verses stipulate via the context, especially the verb tenses. For John 3.16 and so many more, you have this list of passages you can look at coming out of Romans chapter 15. The, verse, the verb form in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one only Son, that whosoever believes in him is actually a noun. Whosoever is the believing one. In that moment of time, you have present tense possession of eternal life. Note that Jewish and Gentile believers, temporal reconciliation unto peace with God and with one another is potential, dependent upon each individual believer's moment-to-moment -moment fellowship with God and with one another based on the grace of God. And that's on the fellowship passages, you can find that again. Now here we have an excerpt from Romans chapter 5 that goes into details on what reconciliation means. Potential, positional, and actual. You can read that. It's a review of Romans 15. We're going to move on to the next section, Ephesians 2, 17 to 18. And having come, Christ Jesus preached peace to those who were far away, Gentiles, and peace to Jews who were near, because through him we have the access, we, both Jew and Gentile believers, by one spirit have access to the Father. Verse 17 says, And having come, he preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him we have both the access by one spirit to the Father. Some manuscript evidence here. If you read these, you'll find the reasoning by which I do this. I want to make sure that I have the right translations. And some, most of the uh, discrepancies are minor. Don't change the meaning. But it's better, better to be more accurate. And Christ Jesus, having come to earth in his humanity, he reconciled mankind to God in his flesh, his body by his blood through his sacrifice for sins, preached the message to all mankind of peace, eternal peace with God and with one another, for those who would choose to believe in him for that reconciliation unto eternal life, Jew and Gentile alike. Whereupon in in Ephesians 2, 13 to 14, it stipulates that Christ Jesus is our peace, the word our referring to Gentiles who became believers in Christ Jesus, and those who were once far off, and author of Paul and Jews who became believers in Christ Jesus, those who were near, i.e. all believers by the blood of Christ, that he himself is their peace, who made both groups into one, breaking down the barrier of the dividing wall of enmity between them. So this Ephesians 2.15, which we went back to look at, further establishes 
that the barrier of the dividing wall of enmity <clears throat> between Jew and Gentile, the law of Moses, was annulled in its entirety.